Now, I ended up giving up on the learning processor. And I, the way I came on to PhotoCard, I mean HyperCard, uh, was really in terms of thinking about islands of information that are disparate. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm 65, I can tell things that I wouldn't told, told if I were earlier. Um, HyperCard was inspired by an LSD trip that I took on a park bench uh, outside my house in, in Las Gatas. And I had taken some really nice acid and I, I was you know, sitting up the whole night watching the stars and I'd look up there at the stars and I kind of looked down and you know, there were street lamps mm -hmm. and there's a parallel between the stars and the street mm -hmm. lamps. The, the stars are these globs of thermonuclear energy burning and another one over there, but they're so far apart. Mm. Many of them can't even communicate it's, it's speed of light limitations. There's sort of, if these guys were talking to each other, they wouldn't have much of a conversation. And I, as I looked down at the street lamps, I saw pools of light and another pool of light and sort of a dark area in the street. I thought about human knowledge. Mm. I, thought, I thought about how, uh, how the physicists know some things and the poets know some things, and the musicians know some things, and the chemists know, and the biologists know some things, and there's a lot of paraphrasing between them, but they don't talk to each other, so they don't see the bigger picture of how they connect. And I thought, um, and I also saw, I saw the curvature of the planet, which is probably because I was wearing thick glasses before my LASIK. <laughs> but I saw that I was at the apex. I was standing on the top of this sphere. Right. Well, of course, we no all matter, are. No matter know, where you are. Because it's a sphere and the pull of gravity pulls down. <laughs> yeah. And I realized that each of us are leaders of yeah. the Blue Marble team. We're it's all like at the top the of our sphere. the spaceship Blue Marble. Yeah. We're all in the same team together. Yeah. We're all breathing the same air. We're, yeah. all, we're all leaders. Yeah. Each of us has to assume a leadership role and we do what we can. And I thought about how if you were a soccer team captain, you'd want your team to play well. It doesn't matter that your team isn't the best soccer team. It's just you want to play better than you were able to before. Right. And so you look for the weak link. You say, okay, the goalie's letting too many through. Right. And you spend hours with the goalie after. And that dedicated extra time with the goalie helps the whole team to, to, to uh, prosper. And I said, okay, I'm a, one of the captains of the Blue Marble team. <laughs> what does our team need? And what is weak on is wisdom. We have technology to change the future, but not the right wisdom to make the ethical and aesthetic choices about between alternative futures. We need more wisdom. I thought, well, hell, I'm a kid. I don't know, well, how can I, I'm not wise. I'm not old enough to have wisdom. I, um, but I, in this sort of acid haze, I thought about the relationship between information and knowledge. You have to have information before you can have knowledge. And knowledge is kind of the how connections. How does this connect to that? How does this work between information? But I saw another level is wisdom is kind of the why connections between the knowledge. If you have modules of knowledge and now you want to make ethical and aesthetic choices about different futures, that's really a why question. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, if you could at least facilitate this, the connection of the different bodies of knowledge talking to each other, then there's kind of a, you know, a, a, a trickle-up effect that you might develop some wisdom on the planet. And so that's where Maybe HyperCard that's really is. came from. Yeah. I thought about how can, we, how can we get the scientists to talk to the musicians and how can we uh, facilitate that communication? No, I just come from a world where we put, where we pasted a tennis shoe into a MacWrite document, <laughs> and now the world dealt with with uh, words and pictures. Right. And I thought, really, what you want is more also is interaction. Yeah. You want to express something in a way that someone can interact with what you've made. And the how interactive did you document. That? So um, I said, let's let's make um, a stack of cards, and each card can have graphics on it mm -hmm. and text on it and buttons that you can touch and they'll do something. They'll go to another card or right. another card in another stack or right. and they'll maybe they'll make a video disc go to a certain frame. And uh, there needed to be some flexibility about what the buttons did. And what I wanted to make is essentially a software construction kit yeah. 
um, that allowed non-programmers right. to put together prefab modules, kind of drag and drop a field here and a, and a button here. And they didn't have to worry about saving the field out to the disk and all that. Now, I take care of that. There were high-level things. They were, you know, um, automatically retained information. You mm -hmm. put something into a field, it's there. And if you unplug the computer, it's still there. In fact, that was one of my goals. Is I was... Uh, I didn't like the way you had to save documents. Yeah, right. So my deal was, if you uh, have done something and you unplug the computer from the wall, it sh has to have everything you've done up to with within a, f a few seconds. That's great. So it always was trickling stuff out. There was no the save in HyperCard, was there? No, there wasn't need. <laughs> wow. It was always trickling out to the... Right. To, to the disk. Now there was a there was a revert. You could go back to a prior version, but basically, uh, having to save a document was a mistake. I think Tim um, Berners Lee has said that the hyperlinking within HyperCard was kind of part of the inspiration of uh, of the World Wide Web. 